What is up YouTube? Craig Lopez here with another tutorialism and today we're going to be taking a deep dive into Groove Agent SE by means of chopping up a vocal sample. So we're going to begin with this. And by the end of the video we're going to have this. Right, so to begin with, I've just got a basic drum loop and a vocal sample. So let's have a listen. And for those of you that are interested, the vocal sample is from this pack, Mantra Vocals. And all of the drums and percussion come from this pack, Ayahuasca, both available on Loop Cloud. I'll put my affiliate link in the description below if you want to go check them out, pick them up for yourself, and support the channel at no extra cost to yourself. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is get my vocal in tune with my kick drum. It's not something that you necessarily have to do, I'm just doing it because I can. To do that, I'm going to use Backbone by Steinberg, which is what I've got all my drums playing out of. So I'm going to click on my kick and just go to pitch analysis and it's saying here the kick drum is playing an F. Now we can see in the sample title that this sample is in D. So I'm just going to highlight it and transpose it up by three semitones. And then I'm going to go to audio, bounce selection, and now we have a new audio file with that transposition baked into it. Right, so let's have a look at chopping this sample up and really making it our own. So I'm going to create an instance of a Groove Agent SE. And if I drag the sample onto the first pad. You can hear that it plays the sample. Okay, so by default, when I hit a pad, it will play the sample all the way through. But what I want is for the sample to stop as soon as I release my finger from the pad. So I'm going to click on a sample. And in the loop mode, I'm going to select until release. And then I'm just going to click on this button here. Zoom to selection so I can see the whole sample in this window. Now there's a few ways we can go about slicing the sample. And one of the cool things about doing this in Groove Agent SC is that everything is non-destructive, which means we're not affecting the original sample in any way, shape or form when we go and start changing different parameters, which is very, very cool. So let's go to the slice page and click on create slices. And now you can see that all our drum pads have been populated. And by default, the sample's been sliced by the transients which Groove Agent has detected. And we can change the mode to grid. And we can change the grid resolution by selecting this drop down menu. We also have a transient and grid, which is a mixture of the two. And we also have a manual mod. But I'm going to go to grid. Change the grid resolution to half, just so I have a nice even 16 slices. So I'm going to right click in here, change the grid to bars and beats, just so that it makes a little bit more sense. So now I'm just going to mute the original vocal. Label this one.
and make it pink because everybody knows vocals are always pink. Now before we start jamming, I'm just going to show you a little bit of a performance hack which can be very, very useful, especially when working with things like vocal chops. So I'm going to go to MIDI inserts and I'm going to select the quantizer. And if I click this checkbox here, what it's actually going to do is quantize my incoming MIDI notes, which is going to make my timing sound perfect, which of course it isn't. And just for now, I'm going to set this to eight notes. And yes, yeah, so already sounding pretty cool, but let's dive a little bit further into what we can do with Groove Agent SE. So the first thing I'm noticing is that there's a few little pops and clicks at the beginning and end of some of these slices. So let's have a look at rectifying that. So I'm going to click on Amp. And I'm just going to slightly increase the attack and release time on the envelopes. I also want each of these slices to play at the exact same volume, regardless of how hard I hit my pads. So I'm going to change the velocity to level ratio to zero. And then I'm going to repeat this process for each of these pads. Now this has stopped some of the pops that happened at the beginning of the samples. But on this slice here, you can hear if I play to the end of the slice, there's still a little bit of a click. But we can just simply click on main, zoom to selection, and we can either change the end point, or we can just fade out the slice like this. And one of the cool things about this sample here is because it loops around and because I sliced it by grid, we actually have exact duplicates of each slice on this pad and this pad and this pad and this pad and so on and so forth. Which means I can now stop playing about the slices in the top half of my pads without worrying about affecting the slices in the bottom half. So let's look at some of the options that we have available. So let's go with slice nine. And let's try pitching this one up by 12 semitones. But you can hear when I've done that, it's actually sped the sample up. So let's see what we can do about that. Let's click on sample and engage audio warp. Let's just select solo. And now if I play them, we can now hear that the pitched up version is now playing at the same speed as the original. It is a little bit chipmunky now, so let's play about with the form and shift. Cool, so let's see what we can do with slice 10, which is of course going to be the same as a slice 2. So let's engage audio warp to begin with. And I'm going to turn sync on. Let's go to beats. And let's change the note length to half. And what this is going to do is keep the original pitch, but half the tempo. Let's go to slice 11. And let's see what happens if we reverse this slice. And for slice 12, let's try a combination of all three of those things. Let's put audio warp on. Let's engage sync. Let's change the pitch, but this time let's go by a fifth or seven semitones. Let's reverse it. And pull the form and shift up. And let's just fade that out. And maybe let's get rid of this breath at the beginning. For slice 13, let's try something a little bit different. Let's try the pitch envelope, maybe. See what happens if we pull this up. So 
Increase the envelope amount. Pull this back a bit. Let's try going the other way around. Let's put the sink on so we can get it in time. For slice 14, let's maybe try playing about with the filter. Let's turn it on. Let's engage the envelope amount. Let's pull the envelope across. Pull the cut off down. Again, let's sync it. Let's try pulling the resonance up a bit. For slice 15, let's maybe try incorporating a little bit of everything. And for this last pad, let's maybe try a MIDI effect, seeing as we haven't really looked at those yet. Let's try a flam. Bye, bye. So let's have a listen to what we have so far. But of course you know the way these things go, so let's take things a step further again. So I'm going to go to main. And I'm going to give each of these pads their own output. I'll click on the first one. Output 2. Second one, output three, so on and so forth. And now if I open up the mixer, we should see that each of these chops now has their own output. Which means we can now put different effects on each of the slices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording of my video because I feel like I'm going to be tweaking away for quite a while on this. And then we come back and see what I've got. So I did just stop the recording there. And after about 20 minutes or so of playing about, this is what I've ended up with. So let me just quickly break down for you the effects that I've actually used here. So as you can see, I've added only Cubase effects on these chops. So on the first one, I've got Loop Mash. So without Loop Mash, the chop sounds like this. And with Loop Mash... On the next one, I've added Phaser. So without the effect, the chop sounds like this. And with the effect... On chop number six, just added a ping pong delay. So of course you don't need to hear what it sounds like without, but with. Sounds like that. On seven, I've added chopper. So without the effect, it sounds like this. And with. Chop eight, I've got the metalizer. So without. And with. On nine, I've got the vibrato. So without, sounds like this. And with. 10, I've got the multi-tap, so without, and with, chop 11, I've got the step filter, so without, sounds like this, and with, on 12 I have the rotary, so without, and with, and then finally on chop 16, I've got the transformer. So without, sounds like this. Bye. And with. Bye. I then added all those chops to a group. Added a little bit of reverb. And some sidechain compression, which is being ducked by the kick. 
So let me play just the kick and the chops. And this is the final result. <laughs> And just a reminder of what we actually started with. And then I just added some chords and some bass. And now we've got a cool little jump off to start making the track with. Okay, if you've made it this far through the video, as always, thanks for watching. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, maybe think about doing it now. I've also got a Patreon page if you want a personalized feedback on your track. And I've also got some pretty sweet deals on some Arturia software right now. So go check that out if you're so inclined. But anyway, that's it for now. I've been Craig Lopez. This has been Tutorialism. I go chop up some vocals. Peace.